Hello friends, today we are going to start with a new series on the general studies portion of engineering services examination. So first let's start with environment impact assessment which is a part of basics of energy and environment. So what is this environment impact assessment? So for example, what if we create a power plant or what if we do this construction? So it will obviously have some impacts on the environment. So the air pollution will increase, we can say for sure and similarly water pollution or the water quality will change, noise pollution will also increase. So this, these are some of the changes which will happen and obviously these are the bad changes or we can say these are putting some bad impact on the environment. But still we need power for our existing lifestyle. So we will, we will require to construct this power plant. So how can we, how can we control the bad effects? That is the purpose of this environment impact assessment. So what we do here, we measure the changes, what are going to be there or the environmental changes that will happen due to this construction. And then how can we control these changes or how can we mitigate the impacts? This is the purpose of this environment impact assessment so it is used in the planning stage of the project so first we need to go through this environment impact assessment before we can start our construction if it is a feasible project so that will be divide that will be decided by the government that if this project is feasible or not depending upon what are going to be the impact and how we are going to control those impacts so government will take the decision depending upon this EIA report. So we need to go th through this whole process in the planning stage of the project. So it is a decision making tool. And who uses this decision making tool? So obviously government uses it to take the decision that whether to whether to make this project or not. And also the planners who are planning this project, they will they can also take the decision that whether to go for this project or not. So it is used by the government as well as planners. So we'll understand these things in detail. So it is a management tool. We use it in project management. And why we use it? So we can make the optimal use of our natural resources so that we can go for sustainable development. And this I have al already talked that whenever we do some construction, it will create some negative impact. So it helps to control those negative impacts. That is, it helps to harmonize the developmental activities and environmental concerns. And it is enacted by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So this you should remember that the governing agency or the agency which enacted this environment impact assessment is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So it was first introduced in 1986 and then there was another notification in 2006 and last year also that is in 2016 one more amendment came in this 2006 notification. So this, this is a very particular amendment. It is about the building sector. So I have included a file or I have mean, given the link where it is given that what are the changes brought in 2016 in this amendment. So we need to first understand this EIA cycle or what are the things that we go through when we go for the environment impact assessment. So first we go for in screening. So I will cover these in detail one by one. So just let's read the names. So first we go for screening then scoping, baseline data collection, impact prediction, assessment of alternatives, delineation of mitigation measures, then we go for public hearing and then for one environment management plan is required and then only we can decide whether to make this project or not and even after we have taken the decision to make this project, we need to monitor. Even after we have done the construction, we need to monitor that what are going to be the or what are the changes that are coming now. So first step is the screening. So screening is basically we find out that whether we have to go through this EIA process or not that is defined in the screening. So it depends upon 
so here I've written that it it checks whether the project requires the environment clearance or not and it is based upon the scale of investment that how big a project is and type of development and what is the location of that project scoping scoping means that we will see that what are the parameters or what is the scope of this project what are the things that it is affecting that is it is is it affecting air water land use so what are all the things that this project will affect so it identifies the key issues and impacts that need to be investigated so this ministry of environment and forest has published the sector wise report sector wise guidelines so from where people can see that what are the what are the issues that need to be investigated so the things that are quantifiable that is pollution and land use and water quality these are these will be measured on what these will be measured that what is going to be the ma magnitude that is how much air pollution will increase that we can measure or how much water pollution can will increase that we can measure and there there will be some non quantifiable aspects also that is let's say before that before the construction of that project that place for a very good landscape so if we construct this project then obviously we are disturbing this landscape and it will not be a very good place after that so we can measure this that if it, when it was a good place then how many tourists were coming so obviously we were generating some revenue with that so these this all is covered in the social socio economic criteria so this is about the scoping and after that baseline data baseline data means that before the construction of the project what was the existing conditions of the parameters so this is what i have written here also that the state of existing environmental parameters site specific parameters should be monitored as required by sc scoping so we will see what are all the parameters and before the construction we will monitor these parameters like air water land use these we will measure and after that we need to check the impact prediction that is first we have measured that this is the baseline data or this is the condition before the construction and now we are doing the construction so this is going to be the change so or the level of pollution that is increasing that we will see in the impact prediction so this is a way of projecting environmental consequences in the future due to presence of the project and its alternatives it has a very high uncertainty so obviously this is a very uncertain uncertain process so we need to consider all the parameters as many parameters as possible so air noise wa water land biological so this i have covered land use means that before let's say it was a agricultural site now you are creating a industry so what is going to be the impact and biological that is what was the flora and fauna in that area so that will be that will also be affected due to this project so that should also be accounted in impact prediction so these are some of the main parameters impact on the local people their wealth and their economic status is also considered so that is what are the the people that those were living in that area so what is the impact on their health and their economic status so if that industry is coming so some of them will get the job so economic status can develop also or maybe if it is not if they are losing their land or something then it can degrade also so that should be considered properly so that is about the impact prediction and after that we need to check for the alternatives and we need to delineate the mitigation measures and then we need to make the eia report so we consider all the possible and alternatives so we will consider that if we can change the technology so what if we are if we are making a power plant so why not make a why not make a solar power plant so that that can be an alternative of the technology and so all the aspects should be covered that is positive and negative and so the location is also covered in this 
and a no project option is also considered that what if we do not make any project also at all so what will be the condition and what if we make this project so all the parameters will be covered the optimum alternative is chosen so among all these we will consider no project then let's say site 1 that is the project location at first site and some other site also site 2 and we can consider the different technology so these are the these can be the various options we have before the construction then we take the de decision basi based upon the optimum alternatives and what we consider in this we consider the environment and economic benefit to the society so the people who are living there and the environment condition so that should be a optimum economic benefit then only we'll go for this project so all these things what I have told these after doing all this we finalize the alternative and a mitigation plan is also made that what are going to be the how we are going to control these things and along with that we make an environment management plan environmental management plan so this I will tell you in a minute So all these alternatives, these are presented in the AIA report and that will go to the decision makers. After this process, that is we have made this AIA report, then we will go for public hearing. So whatever the people are there in that concerned area, they are called upon. So who, what can be those people? The local resident, residents and the associations which are there in that area and the environmental group. So they will be called and they can they can put their opinions. So a committee will be made and like it will include the local collector of that area and some other authority. So concerned public should be informed and they will be called upon and they can put their opinions. So that should also be considered. And after that we make this environment management plan as I told earlier. So what we do in this, we include the mitigation measures and compensation measures and we also delineate the unmitigated impact that is what are the things that we are we cannot control and planning also that how we are going to control so the work program time schedule that when we are going to do it and the location so it should be a very detailed plan that when we are going to do all these things these should be considered and financial plan also that is what is going to be the budget you are putting aside for these mitigation plans it is also included so after all this has been done then we go for the decision making so the decision is done by the impact assessment authority and the project proponent will be the person who wants this project to happen or to take place so considering this EIA report and the environment management plan this authority will take the decision so after even if the clearance has been provided so after that also monitoring should be done so that is during the construction and the operation stages so when the construction is taking place and when the operation is taking place in both the stages we need to monitor this environmental conditions so we can ensure that the commitments that were made during the project or during the planning stage whether they are or the whether they are complied or not or those the, these predictions are correct or not and if these are not correct then some corrective measures should be taken so here I have included the features of this 2006 amendment so what some features are there or the main features I have included here so it decentralized the process and the projects are divided into category A and category B project so category A projects are the national level project and category B projects are the state level project so category A projects are appraised by nation at national level by impact assessment agency and the expert appraisal committee this you can remember it can be asked in objective and the state level environment impact assessment authority this is for 
कैटेगरी बी प्रोजेक्ट अलॉन्ग विद स्टेट लेवल एक्सपर्ट अप्रेजल कमेटी दीज आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड फॉर द क्लियरेंस ऑफ कैटेगरी कैटेगरी बी प्रोजेक्ट एंड सो फॉर आफ्टर दिस अमेंडमेंट दिस साइकिल इज मेड अप ऑफ फोर स्टेज दैट इज स्क्रीनिंग स्कोपिंग सो इन स्कोपिंग ऑल द थिंग्स आर कवर्ड दैट इज यू नीड टू टेक द बेस लाइन डेटा एंड इम्पैक्ट प्रोडिक्शन ऑल दीज आर कवर्ड हियर देन यू नीड टू गो फॉर पब्लिक हियरिंग एंड देन फॉर अप्रेजल दैट इज डिसीजन मेकिंग सो हियर अबाउट दिस कैटेगरी ए एंड कैटेगरी बी प्रोजेक्ट वन मोर थिंग इज देयर दैट इज if it is a category a project then it will definitely go for eia that is environment impact assessment so we do not do not go under screening so we need not find that whether we should go for eia or not if it is a category a project then we are going obviously going to do this environment impact assessment now for category b project if it is a category b project then it is divided into b1 and b2 so if it is a if it is a b1 project category b1 project so it requires so first of all these projects the category b projects will go under screening so here i can write if it is a category b project then it will first go under screening then we will say that if it is a category b1 project or category b2 project if it is a b1 project then it goes under in the environment impact assessment and if it is a category b2 project then it does not go we do not require the environment impact assessment so that is about this eia so i will include this file in the description below so you can use it later so thank you for this next time we will see another topic